Okay. All right, so we're tearing into the RS block, 2-3 open deck. Uh, flat plane, what did you say earlier? Yeah, it's a flat plane, Craig. Yep. So we are going to dig into this a little bit and show you the uh, cracked piston uh, skirt. And so luckily it all got picked up in the oil pickup, which did its job. But uh, still a really sad day, and I had to get a new motor and pay out of pocket for it because they caught the tune, which they will catch for all of you out there who say they won't. And I don't care how good your dealer is, you should uh, just not. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to, just be, uh, you know, pay to play. You're ready for it. And if we do something wrong, this is just for fun. Yeah, yeah. I don't really care about any of the parts, so. No, we're just taking this apart we're for fun at this point. Save anything. No, I, mean, I, I don't think we're ever going to use this block. Um, and uh, the problem with the open deck is thin cylinder walls, which is partially why they fail when they get to high horsepower, which is why everyone uses the Focus ST blocks. But Nate walks through it. What are we looking at? So these are the connecting rods or the end caps for them. Yep. Big honking things in the middle is the crankshaft. So we're going to pop all the bolts loose on the connecting rod caps here. Okay. There's two per cylinder. So we're gonna pull all those off, pull the caps off, and then we're gonna pull all the main journal stuff, uh, nuts off, pull out the crankshaft, pop the pistons up, and then we'll go from there. Sweetness. Yeah, so for starters, and then just to observe, the outside pistons go up and down together, obviously, and you can see that right here. And then, Nate, would you, uh, oh, actually, I can tighten that a little bit without pinching your finger in there. And then you'll see how the uh, number two and three, I know it is. It's a pain. And then you can see the end caps for the uh, number two and three piston, which move up and down in unison. So there you go. Mm -hmm. Pretty slick. All right, let's tear into it. Yeah, so this is the flat plane. So every 180 degrees is where, so like this one's all the way down, this one's all the way up. Right. So like on a LS engine, well, for example, a V8, it's a cross plane. So it's every 90 degrees. So this one's down, this one will be this way, this one is up, and this one's over here. Right. Um, Neat. Light down. <laughs> ah! Yeah, and then flat planes are inherently unbalanced. So like this one has a balance shaft. This has this big gears for it. So there's a balance shaft that sits here. Kind of counter counterbalances everything. And these, these holes on the end right here are just for balancing, aren't they? Like that's part of the balance process. This drill that hole right, uh, right here. Yeah, so they they can drill out, you know, take material out of this to balance the crankshaft itself. <coughs> and you could rev these a lot higher flat planes versus cross planes, and they have a lot less mass in them. So that's the reason why a Ferrari revs to eight and a half, and an LS only revs to six. What's the point of needing a balance well, shaft in here though? It reduces vibrations. Okay, because I remember we deleted are, that. I mean, they're balanced, but they they vibrate a lot. So that's why like. The GT350 Mustang is the largest ever flat plane crank V8 that's ever been made. Yep. Just because the bigger you get, the more vibrations you get. So like this being a 2.3 is considered like a large four-cylinder engine. Okay. Just because the bigger you go with displacement, the more vibrations you have throughout the engine. Yeah, that makes sense. And it makes them harder and harder to balance. And vibrations either, you know, not great for longevity and comfort. Yeah, it makes sense. Well, cool. Let's keep tearing into it. Okay, so we got the bolts out. What were those, three-eighths or something? Yeah, well, they're supposed to be like an E, like an E bit, but we yeah. kind of wrecked them a little bit. But yeah. three-eighths seem to work pretty good. We're just tearing it apart right now. But, uh, okay, so we got those caps off there. So that's just the end cap. And then this is your connecting rod bearing. Connecting rod bearing. This is the only thing that prevents your engine from eating itself. Really? Probably have, you know, worn... Because as this cab gets bigger, you lose pressure, right? So the tighter it is, the more pressure you have. So the pressure, so the gap between that bearing and yep. the... So oil pressure is basically measured. I mean, it's measured by a sensor up here, but the pressure comes from the clearance between this bearing here and the face of the connecting rod, or the crankshaft. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Crankshaft. You can see a little hole down there. Yeah. Right there. That's where the oil comes out. So oh. the oil passes through the crankshaft and sprays in here. Yeah. And then it exits. exits. Ah, there it is. Very cool. So when you spin a bearing, that's when this welds onto here, onto yep. your crankshaft. Yep, and that could be either lack of oil or just it gets so hot from running it at higher RPM, it creates a lot of friction. And then this gets so hot to this gets so hot because these are rubbing together constantly. Because they don't have enough oil. And eventually they'll rub together, rub together, rub together, and then they'll weld themselves together. Okay. Spin a bearing, and then your bearing is now spinning around inside the. 
Thank you, Brian. And sends little pieces of metal everywhere. Yep, and pretty much grenades an engine. Yeah, okay, so you spin a bearing. So if your oil pressure light comes on and you keep driving, one of the possibilities is you spin a bearing and your motor goes bye-bye because you didn't want to see if it was the oil pressure sensor or an actual oil pressure problem. But you do <laughs> save money on extra oil you didn't have to put in. That's true. You've so 60, bucks, 60 bucks, 60 bucks. <laughs> we were just tossing all this. So next we're going to pull all these nuts off. And then we can pull, I think, this whole... I've never pulled one of these apart before, but I think this whole, like, skeletonized thing. Yep. Should come off, and then pull the crankshaft out. Should pull the crankshaft from there. Sweetness, let's do it. What size are those? Fifteen mil, I think. Are... Yeah, fifteen. Yeah. Why is there a crowbar? Cool. Well, here we go. We don't want to talk about that. Don't worry about that crowbar. It's not how we're so turning we're everything. Easy. Let's catch in the forehead. All right, we got all the bolts out. There they are, real long. So this bracket, we just had to pop it off, but it's not too stuck on there, so. Well, that was easy. Yeah. And there should be. Just a big piece of metal. And these are your main caps, that's what they're called. I'm gonna make a wine bottle holder or some shit out of that, I don't know. You can make a little table. Or a key those. ring rack, ooh. Or a we'll put the bolts back in in here and then uh, stick it on the wall, cool. yeah. Like yeah, I think that's gonna be at the end of this video. Or. You just make a cone, but you just put hooks on the ends of these. Uh, hey, hold on. How far, how far uh, through these I don't does think this go? This is through it, though. Yeah, that'll stick into the wall. Yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Anyway, that's pretty. You now, can just pull these out a little bit. You can even put like, like gardening tools in there. This is gonna be fun. This RS is just gonna turn into tools in the yard garage. <laughs> Tool holders in the garage. Yeah, yard 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 ornaments. Well, cool. Uh, you want to set that down? Does this pull right out here, or what else do we have to uh, do yeah, to pull out the... Right do you want to slide that whole thing over your way, and we'll just put it right here? Oh, yeah. And there she be. The old crankshaft. How's it look? Good. It looks like it's... Relatively intact. I don't see Looks like it has 8,000 miles on it. 8,000 miles. 8,200. 8,200, sorry. God, that's insane. And this is what the inside of an RS block looks like. Upside down. So what are... Look, so you can see the pistons sticking right in there. That is really these, cool. These oil lines? This is really cool for me. I've never actually seen this out of like a newer engine. Those little uh, lines right there? Yeah, what are these? Is this oil or... Oil, oil. return or something? Those are <clears throat> oil squirters is what they're called. So they spray oil on the back sides of the pistons. Keeps the pistons pistons cool. right here. And keeps the like, lubricated. All this is sealed, so fuel's not getting in here. Fuel's on the other side. Yeah, a little bit of fuel gets through, just because just the way it is it doesn't 100% seal. But the oil's not getting into the combustion chamber. No. Okay. And if it does, then you have a, a rain problem. Or, or a rotary. <laughs> you have an RX-8. <laughs> yeah. That is really cool. Well, because the kind of the RX-8, they're just on the other side. Like it just squirts, I mean there's no pistons right there, but it just squirts oil right in with the fuel. Oh wow, these push right out. Mm -hmm. You can pull it right out the top from the bottom. Wanna flip it over? <coughs> I would just pull them out the bottom right now. Just pull them straight up. All right. I do the first one. Yeah, just uh, you're gonna have to come over here to pull, oh, pull them just to yank them up. Yeah, you just go straight up, right? Mm -hmm. Or am I gonna hit, how do you not hit that oil line? Oh, maybe, okay, yeah, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna push them out the top. Oh yeah, top. you're right. Yeah, we all have to Or can you just take top. that one bolt out and get this out? Yeah, it's just as easy to pull them out the bottom. Just push it this way. And oh, jeez, that could have been bad. One. Here, I'm gonna keep them in order over here. Actually, we'll put them like this. There's one. Nate, you wanna push those down a little bit? Nice, that could have got my fingy. Ready? Yeah, go ahead. You can just push them both. I think this is the broken one. Yep, that's the broken one. That's our broken piston. We'll oh, look at it in shit. a sec. One okay. of these is not like the other. Hold on, Nate. Let me grab it. Here, so put that. Is that number two you got there? Yeah. Okay. Is this the first one? That's the first one. Just a second one. You want to move that one here? Yeah, there you go. So there's your noise. Whole damn piston skirt's gone. But that's less rotating mass. Nate, put a good one next to it, would you?
So all of that's missing. God damn, that is insane. Mm -hmm. Look at that. <laughs> that is depressing. 8,200 miles, and the failure is a piston skirt. Not the block, not anything else. This, this, my fellow YouTube and watching. My fellow Americans. All right, guys. If you cob tune a S tier or an RS, this could happen. Well, more on an RS, I guess, but. Um, yeah, this is 8,000 miles with a cob tune, and that's it. I didn't have any other mods at the time. I only had a cob tune. Cob tune, guys. Shout out to cob tuning. And, um,. The RS community for telling me that it'd be covered under warranty. Um, I blame all of you for misleading the kids, just like uh, going to college is a good idea. Um, <laughs> hey, Nate, did you need your college degree for your job right now? Nope. Did you? For your current job? Law school. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. Force, so yeah. I, I didn't need one either. Idea. Yeah, oh, okay. So after further inspection, this one has a crack in it. Mm -hmm. Can you put that in the light over here? Wow. Wow. And they say it's a tune's fault. That is unbelievable. This one looks fine. <clears throat> and for all you Suvi guys, a ring line failure is one of the spur cracks. Yeah, so walk me through all the rings on that real quick, would you? <clears throat> yeah, so these top two are compression rings. Here, pull it uh, over in the light here. I can't really see it that great. <clears throat> okay. So these, this top, these top two rings are your compression rings. So that's what actually seals the piston against the cylinder wall. Yep. So when this moves up, I mean, these are obviously... And these gaps right here are on opposite ends. So, like, you can see this gap right here on this ring, and it's going to be a 180 from that. Yep, you want to keep it 180. On the other side. Because if you have it like this... Then you have a spot for oil to go through. Yep, and combustion gases and that stuff goes in your yep. engine. And then this it. is an oil control ring, this one that has, like, uh, little slots in yep. it right here. It's your oil scraper. So this scrapes yep. the oil. So when that squirter sprays the back of the piston, when this comes down... Well, yeah, down. down. Yep. It scrapes all the oil off the cylinder wall. Okay. Very cool. And the top two are just for basically cleaning the piston out, right? <clears throat> oh, it's for sealing it. Oh, yeah, yeah for sealing usually it. Usually the top one's for sealing it, and then the second one's kind of like a backup, if anything gets past the first one. Cool. Well, that is amazing. I'm very glad we uh, took the opportunity to pull this apart. Although, I mean, God, this is just incredible. And the fact that another piston was on its way out the door just blows my mind, you know? And it's just incredible. What sends the signal to... Is this just... If the engine's running, it's just like RPM depending on how much oil it squirts in automatically. Just oil pressure. Like a, it always okay. it. Incredible. On the crankshaft here. Yeah, let me see. Crankshaft's fine because that's a little discoloration, but this bearing needs to be replaced because it has a look on it. Let's see. Oh, look, you can see a groove in there. Mm -hmm. That's probably when a piece of the metal from the normal piston Bad. came apart. That's crazy. So on an open deck motor like this one, you've got coolant jackets, basically. So it's better for cooling and thermal efficiency. And um, on the ST, these are all filled in. And the block itself is much thicker in some of the weaker spots. Um, which I don't have it side by side, obviously, but that's why if I rebuild my ST motor for power, I would use that block, take it all apart like with this, with crankshaft and pistons out, and build it with a bigger uh, built crankshaft, a keyed crankshaft, and then uh, pistons that can actually handle some uh, some power, which that one cannot. But yeah, pretty interesting. So when you look down at these oil, what are they called? Oil squirters. So if you look close, you can see how that one's pointing pretty much straight up. And the one that blew is all bent. And then if you look at the other ones, they also point straight up. But the one that blew, number three here, is all bent out of shape. So we don't know if that happened um, post, blow up. post explosion or if that's part of why is maybe it wasn't keeping it cool and it decided to say goodbye. Or keeping it lubricated, whatever. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is something. See, this is why you need to train your pistons good enough that they can leave, but treat them well enough that they don't want to. <laughs> I, uh, I'll agree with that. Oh, 350 piston next to a RS piston. Two, three, 350.